Well, you will recall in the run-up to the conclusion of the withdrawal treaty, there was a lot of work done on what was then called planning for a no-deal Brexit in, the, in case the UK and Gibraltar left the European Union without a withdrawal agreement. In the event there was a withdrawal agreement, but we spent a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of effort at, at the time producing a series of technical notices alerting people as to the possibility of no deal and what they should do and guiding them as to the consequences. So the technical notice issued now relating to the border is simply a continuation of that work, perhaps in a slightly different context, because we've left the European Union already. We left at the end of January, as you know. We are now in a period of transition that finishes on the 31st of December 2020. There, is a, there are negotiations going on between the European Union and the United Kingdom, including Gibraltar in areas which concern us, as to what the future relationship is going to be. Now, if there is an agreement on the future relationship, that will govern our relationship with the European Union going forward. That includes our nearest European Union neighbour, Spain. If there isn't one, then it's leaving and having a relationship with the European Union which is not regulated by any agreement or any framework. So this is going to be the first of a series of notices we're going to issue to alert people as to that possibility. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means it can happen. The government is working flat out to ensure that there is an agreement be, which includes Gibraltar and which involves a future relationship with the European Union. We're working flat out to achieve that. But if we cannot achieve that, if it doesn't happen, then we need to prepare for, for, for the next best outcome, which is no deal in this particular case. What would you say to people who might argue that the timing of this statement is an attempt to head off criticism over concerns that getting closer to Schengen might mean getting politically closer to Spain and that this is a way to get people to back your negotiations? Well, I think it's quite extraordinary because this is what we, what we also issued, this kind of, of, uh, of technical notice. We also issued, at the time, as I said earlier, of a no-deal Brexit in relation to the withdrawal treaty, which is now well over a year ago. So this is a continuation of that work. It's not anything new. But there, is, there does come a point when negotiations are happening where you need to prepare for the other alternative, which is no deal. And in this particular case, on this particular issue, which relates to the border, it really is quite simple. If there is no future agreement, which includes Gibraltar between the United Kingdom and the European Union, uh, which obviously involves Gibraltar in that discussion, if there is none, then we cannot have the status quo going forward after the 31st of December. What it will mean is that uh, we will cease to be citizens of the Union, European Union nationals as we are now, all British citizens will cease to be that, not only us uh, Gibraltarians, all, all British citizens will cease to have that status. And it will mean that at the external borders of Schengen, there will be different types of controls. Instead of the systematic checks which are carried out on EU citizens, which includes us, us too, even though we are in a transition, it will, we will be subject instead to thorough checks. Those thorough checks include, for example, the stamping of passports, include the passing of passports through electronic machines to verify them with the Schengen information system. It includes, the, in, from 2022, the ETIAS advanced travel notification into the European Union. It includes border guards having the ability under the law to question p people who are crossing in other direction as to why you're entering the Schengen area. If you say, I'm going to such and such a hotel, they may ask you, can I see the voucher? Can I see that you have the, the, the level of subsistence to be able to sustain yourself in the Schengen area? So you, w that is written in the Schengen border code that date, dates back many years. This is not new. It is true that the Schengen border code applies at the frontier today. What changes, as I said, is that we will cease to be EU nationals and we will become third country nationals. So the controls on us are going to be different. If Gibraltarians become subject to the frontier measures you've set out, it could mean that the frontier could effectively be strangled whenever the Spanish authorities will it. How can Gibraltar protect itself and its economy against that? Well, first of all, let me say that we, we are taking every single step in all the areas that are within our control to ensure that there are proper mitigation measures. As I said, the Schengen border code is what applies today. Our status under that code will change going forward. In relation to customs, for example, Gibraltar is not in the customs union today. So one obvious way of making sure that uh, all of this doesn't happen is to ensure there is a proper uh, association of some kind between Gibraltar 
and the Schengen area, which and the Schengen area is essentially a common travel area, to ensure that there is an association between Gibraltar and Schengen. Now, that association, that agreement, certainly for the government, has a number of red lines. These relate to sovereignty, jurisdiction, and control. And we are certainly not going to cross those red lines at all. But that is the alternative. The alternative is very clear. Either we have an agreement with Schengen, which means we can do away with all these measures provided for already in the Schengen Border Code. These already exist, remember. Or we simply go forward and what applies then would be the Schengen Border Code with the measures that are set out in the law, in the code itself. What input would the Gibraltarian public be able to have on such an agreement? Well, what we are discussing is a future relationship of Gibraltar with the European Union. I mean, this isn't anything to do with the wider issues of sovereignty, jurisdiction or control or the status of Gibraltar. I think the Chief Minister has already made it very clear that in the event that there is anything which goes, which establishes a change in status, then that will be put to referendum before it's implemented. What we are saying is we are talking about a relationship with the European Union. And what we are discussing at the moment in the ongoing uh, negotiations that are taking place is other details of what that relationship is going to be. And what we are saying in this technical notice, that the way to get out of all the problems that applying the Schengen Border Code in full are going to mean is to have a proper association agreement with Schengen, which protects the sovereignty, jurisdiction and control of Gibraltar. How difficult will negotiations be when this is hanging over Gibraltar almost as a threat, potentially putting us on the back foot? Do you think this will entrench people further against working with Spain? Well, bear in mind that Gibraltar and the United Kingdom have never been in Schengen anyway. So I mean, we've never been there. Uh, there was already an element of uh, discussion. There was certainly a considerable amount of public information in relation, as I said before, to the withdrawal treaty. So uh, and what I'm saying is not new. This was said at the time of the withdrawal treaty. It is also con contained, as I said, in the code itself, and the code has been there now for very, very many years. So none of this is new. Now, this is part of the discussion that we're having when you're talking, when the two sides are talking and negotiating, people put on the table what it is that they want, and then we see whether it's possible to come to an agreement or whether it's not possible. This particular work stream that I'm talking about today relates to there being no future relationship agreement. There is a parallel work stream which deals with a future relationship agreement. So we're a small government, we're a small administration, as I said, as you all know, but we're working flat out to ensure that we negotiate the best deal for Gibraltar and that that deal certainly does not impinge in any way in sovereignty, jurisdiction or control. At this stage in the proceedings and with the recent controversy over the internal market bill, how much of a chance is there realistically that a UK-EU Brexit deal can be agreed and that even if it were, that Gibraltar would have enough input in it? Well, th there is, as you rightly say, the wider political climate and the wider political climate is set by the relationship or the discussions between the United Kingdom and the European Union for their own agreement. Now, we know that all sides have already said in relation to Gibraltar that it may be possible to have our own agreement, even if the UK and the EU do not have one. That obviously remains to be seen and is part of the discussion that is taking place. But certainly it may well be that because of the wider relationship between the UK and the EU, that that sours our own negotiations and our own discussions going forward. We need to wait and see. If no deal can be agreed, you've said the next step would be to try to mitigate the effects on the frontier. But how could any differentiated deal or attempts at mitigation agreed with this Spanish government be protected against future Spanish administrations which might take a harder line on Gibraltar? Well, I think we learned our lesson from, from Cordova. I mean, Cordova was essentially a, a political agreement. It wasn't a treaty. So it meant that a future Spanish government could come along and change or abolish completely what had been agreed. And we saw that, that is effectively what happened when Mr. Margallo became foreign minister of Spain and the Partido Popular became the government of Spain. So part of the work we're doing is trying to protect against that. And the way to protect against that, essentially, is to ensure that as much as possible is contained in a UK EU agreement and that it is a treaty so that a, a Spanish government comes along in four, five or ten years time and it tries to change things, it finds that it is not able to do it, not able to do it. These effects would come as a result of Brexit, which Gibraltar did not vote for. What sort of effect does this have on the relationship Gibraltar has with the government run by Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings, who arguably brought this situation about? Well, for many years, um, 
even I, I dare say before Brexit, there were people pro-Europe and anti-Europe. For many years, Gibraltar has worked very well and very closely with all political parties in the United Kingdom and with all shades of opinion in the political system in the United Kingdom. So, for example, we have amongst the strongest supporters, just to give you an example in a different area, members of the Scottish National Party. You saw the message from the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. And we have also members and supporters of, of the, uh, the Ulster Unionists that stand for the complete opposite. And you saw we had a message on National Day also from Arlene Foster. So really, the, the, the Gibraltar has worked very well and very closely with all shades of political opinion in the United Kingdom. And we need to do that because at the end of the day, we are here to foster, to, to develop and to make sure that we protect the wider interests of Gibraltar as a whole.